I love seeing Unity projects that look so realistic because they really just prove some assumptions wrong and show us what we can do in Unity as well. So in this video, we're going to take a look at an incredible demo created by Oniros, which is an interior project that aims for realistic graphics. So let's go ahead and check it out. Hey guys, it's Sam here. And so today I realized that we have a series where we take a look at Unity tips and tricks. And then we got another one where we take a look at some games. But I also thought, like I'm a level designer, right? And I know that you guys like seeing good graphics and which I do as well because of my level designing background. So I thought maybe in this series-ish, which I'm not really sure if we should call this a series yet, we can take a look at some cool stuff made with Unity or just cool stuff in general, like demos and such. Furthermore, we could also like interview the creators of the stuff that we cover on the channel and actually learn how they've achieved it. But like I said, it's just a thought process for me right now. So let me know what you think of this idea in the comments and I might actually turn this into a series. But let's go ahead and take a look at this demo. So as you can see, it looks incredibly realistic and it is made with Unity 2018. This, in all honesty, is just raw proof of what can be done if people with experience get their hands on Unity. And I know this is like a topic a lot of people discuss and argue about whether or not Unity has like cartoon only graphics or supports good graphics or whatever. But it's like, just take a good look at this. Like, don't you think that this is photorealistic? Speaking of which, we're also going to break this down and see how they achieve this type of realism because I did interview the creators of this demo, Oniros, and they've actually answered all of my questions. So make sure you stick until the end. Oh, and also, for those of you wondering, I'm not rocking like a NASA computer to run this demo either. I'm actually on a Razer Blade laptop right now. And for those of you interested, I'm going to leave all of my laptop specs in the description box of this video and have them up on the screen right now. So one of the things that really struck me with this demo was that compared to all the other demos I tried so far that heavily focused on interiors specifically, this also includes a small outside part. And to be fully honest, it's not directly like an exterior, right? But it's still a proof that the outside world looks good too, judging by the windows and stuff like that. Also, I need to mention like the post-processing used in this demo is honestly one of the greatest so far that I've ever seen. I really like how they haven't overdone it, like increased the saturation and bloom to the max as most indie developers tend to do nowadays. They made it look really nice and realistic. And speaking of which, it does look photorealistic, doesn't it? Like I realized this as soon as I launched the demo, like it doesn't just look like the graphics are good, but this truly looks photorealistic, like in real world. And one of the things that makes this demo differ from most of the scenes that we create in Unity are the textures. Because if we look at the floor, for example, we can see that a simple wooden floor texture is being used. But look closer, it's not just simple because you can see the artifacts in the wood, like the small details like very shallow tessellation in the form of lines, and these small details all provide realism, which is why I talked about this so much in my previous video of level design principles. Another spot that I want to bring your attention to is the outside scene, and here we can look at the ground with tile stones and some moss in between them. However, notice how the moss isn't too much, but it looks super realistic at the same time because the texture is good. And this is something that a lot of indie developers make a mistake of as well. Like they, if they get the ability to fill up a little bit of moss on tile stones or whatever texture it might be, they just overdo it usually. Not everyone, obviously not all the times, but you know, often. And same goes for the foliage right beside the ground on those rocks. However, to be honest, I think it would have looked a little better if they perhaps filled this up with some real but small pebbles too. I know pebbles have become like a meme at this point on this channel to give that tessellated look at the rocks, you know what I mean? Oh, and also, raindrops. Raindrops, drop top. The reflection probes also really help with this entire demo with this realism. Like, look at the windows from outside. You can tell how realistic this type of reflection looks. And so they obviously use a mirror reflection for the windows. I just want to describe that. But then they also use some reflection probes in the scene, which reflects the color from the sky in here. And so it looks very bright and rainy, just like it is outside, which is a nice addition. Something else that really makes this scene feel alive, besides the beautiful color mixture and realistic textures, is the motion. It's small and subtle, but it exists. If we take a look at the IVs on the wall here, for example, you can see them get affected by the wind, right? 
And it's not too much, which is where the main beauty of this lies, because it's a mistake that most indie developers make with their foliage in the scenes nowadays. Like they just increase the wind sliders all the way up and the grass ends up looking like it's at a rock concert. And obviously these are 3D models, but there's also the same type of foliage, but they stick to the wall. And this makes it look more real because it's raining outside and some of this ivy might have stick to the wall because of that, or perhaps they're just on the wall for decor, right? But basically it looks better having it compared to without it because without them, it might've looked a little too empty and not so subtle with the motion on the 3D ones. So it basically feels like they're completing the circle that the 3D IV models start. And we were talking about reflections for a moment ago outside the house, but they also exist inside the house. So if we take a look at this kitchen, for example, you can see that the screen space reflection makes the floor and other furniture in the room visible when you stare at the fridge. And same thing happens if you stare at this black metal door sideways, but less of a reflection because of its natural material. The tiles on the kitchen wallpaper also allow for reflections from this effect, but not too much. And it's more diffuse and subtle compared to the fridge, for example, but more than the door, right? And that's the focus on small detail right here, which makes all the difference in the world. One more thing that I realized is that the cabinets don't reflect too much, except for a little bit of light. And that's also because of their physical materials and this kind of material in the real world wouldn't be affected by screen space reflections like furniture and stuff like that. And to make the scene as real as possible, they made sure that it doesn't do that here either. And this is a topic that we're gonna break down a little bit further with the developers of this demo because this is a part of the interview that I did with them where I basically asked me a question about this. And that's coming up in this video in just a moment, so stay tuned. I also realized something about the windows. So when you look through them, they don't look just plain and washed out and transparent. They actually have a very transparent texture to them. And I don't know if you can see this in the video, I hope so, but they look like the stains that our windows have in real life. And now watch people comment like, ew, Sam has stains on his windows. I know you do too, okay, don't lie. <laughs> but this basically makes it look nice because if you take a look at it from the side, you can just barely notice the stains, which gives it a realistic vibe. One more thing I wanna talk about just super quick is the realism in the fabric and cloth materials of the furniture in the scene. Like the cushions, the sofa, uh, chairs, the bed, and all that stuff on it, they just look so good. You can see the small black spots on them. That makes all of these furnitures look so good in their own form. And now the time has finally come, guys. Probably what you've been waiting for, unless you actually skipped the whole video, because I'm gonna leave some like links in the in the pinned comment. But last but not least, let's also quickly go through the interview with Oniros to learn more about how they created this demo. And it's gonna be pretty short, and it's actually text-based because I wrote to them through Messenger or Facebook but I'll basically narrate it with this beautiful voice of mine. So my first question was, how many polygons or triangles do most of these models in the scene have to learn more about the models themselves? And they said 1.8 million without occlusion culling. And my second question was, were there any specific optimization techniques that you used to have this good of a frame rate? Because I was having super good frame rate in this demo. And they replied saying, we work hard on optimizing each single geometry asset and this allows us to achieve this kind of results. Moreover, it's important to have fewer draw calls, texture atlas, and if possible, have baked lighting instead of real time. And then my third question was, are these models using custom shaders or are they the standard shaders Unity provide? And they replied by, almost all of the assets use standard shaders, but we also created some custom shader like velvets, carpets and glasses, etc. And then I continue by asking, do you plan on using HDRP or your own custom scriptable render pipeline in the future? Because they're not using HDRP yet because it doesn't support VR yet. And they said, yes, for sure. Also, this demo maybe will be converted using the HDRP in the future, which is pretty cool to hear. And in the video, I talked a little bit about the cloth materials. And so I asked them, how were you able to achieve such realistic looking cloth materials? And they replied by saying, they are custom shaders and paying attention about the conversion from high to low poly and their unwrap was important. And then I asked them, when you achieve these amazing graphics, do you feel like there's a part of Unity that's helpful with that? Like a feature or something with the 
workflow perhaps and they said the gi or global illumination which it means and the post-process image effects are super important in our workflow and my last question was do you have any general tips for people trying to achieve the same kind of visual quality and they said attention to details and don't use too many light but use few of them to create greater feel of depth of the space. And that's kind of like an interesting topic that I've been trying to cover on this channel for a while because they say attention to details and don't use too many light but use few of them to create greater feel of depth of the space. So especially for interior models and interior scenes, if you have lighting all over the place, you're not going to be able to tell the shadows a lot, right? And that kind of makes it look a little more cramped up and not too large as the as the model itself, as the design. But if you use fewer lights and just let the the global illumination and let the post-processing and the rest of the lights and shadows kind of like lit up the home, it's gonna look a lot better. So that is basically all I wanted to say and analyze for this video. A super big thank you to Oniros for giving me access to this demo and helping me out with my questions and showing us, the community, how glorious the things that we build in Unity can actually look. And obviously, if you wanna check out more about Oniros and see what they're up to, I'm going to leave some links to them in the description box of this video. Besides, they also have a series of assets on the Unity Asset Store, which I truly stand behind called ArcWiz Pro. So you can use them to achieve this type of interior quality when it comes to furniture and things like that. And obviously there's going to be a link to that series in the description too. If there are any other demos you would like me to check out and analyze, and if you have any thoughts regarding this new series that I wish to start, let me know by commenting on this video. And if you want to watch more videos like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, which supports me a lot. And also hit the subscribe button so you stay up to tune for new videos. And don't forget to activate the notification bell too, which will make sure that you get notified whenever I upload. And if you like the content that I upload on this channel, by the way, consider supporting me on Patreon, which allows you to donate to this channel monthly. And in return, you get early access to certain video series on this channel and various perks like a role in our Discord server special to you, exclusive giveaways and things like that. And you can also find a link to our Patreon page in the description box of this video. Now, with that being said, I hope you enjoy your time watching and I look forward to see you in the comment section and in our Discord server where I'm going to be active in these two places. So thanks for watching and have a good one. I also want to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, and all of our other Patreons of this month. You guys are awesome.